Hi, I'm Andrew Beal, founder of Books of Discovery and the author of Trail Guide to the Body. Books of Discovery has played a critical role in massage therapy education for over 20 years, with thousands of schools teaching from our textbooks. And this success is based on a commitment to publishing content that makes learning easier and more effective, both in the classroom and virtually. Which brings me to Pat Archer and Lisa Nelson, co-authors of the newly updated Applied Anatomy and Physiology for Manual Therapists. Their goal in writing this text was to offer students meaningful learning experiences by making a and content memorable and engaging for massage therapy students. So, without further ado, Hi, Pat. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Drew. <laughs> Hi, Drew. So let, let me start off with this. When and how did the idea for this textbook come about? Uh, well, like a lot of things, it came out of a frustration. We had been teaching a and at massage schools and kind of were frustrated with the text. None of them were written to speak to our students. They were written to speak to people that are going into all sorts of healthcare fields. And so we started to ask, what are our students asking for when they ask questions of us? People wanna know, why do I have to know this? Or they would ask, what does this have to do with the work that I'm gonna do as a massage therapist? And it really came out of conversations between Pat and myself to say, we really would love a textbook that applied the information of a and P to the students and the work that they were preparing to do. And, and I think a part of that is to make it relevant, but also approachable, that it doesn't have to be kind of hidden in a lot of scientific language. You have to have enough scientific language so that they can be professional and talk with other healthcare professionals, but it has to be applicable to who they are as people now so that they're invested in it and who they want to be as professionals. So that was kind of the idea. Mm. So with that in mind, let's, let's dive into the textbook a little bit. Are there certain features that help with the retention of a and concepts? Uh, yeah, you know, we, we uh, have each, in each chapter, we have a set of features that are designed to focus students on key anatomy, physiology information that's relevant to manual therapists. We have uh, pathology alerts. Uh, where we talk about some of the common pathologies that a ma manual therapist is most likely to see in their practice. Uh, and we have what do you think questions, questions in each chapter that sort of divides each key subject matter within a chapter or a system into segments and then asks the students to apply that information into their everyday life or think about it in terms of what this information might mean to how they would move forward in their manual practice. And then most specifically on that last point, we have manual therapy applications inside each chapter. Uh, and the manual therapy applications is where we take a piece of uh, anatomy physiology for that system and apply it directly to some of the theories and principles of manual therapy practice, some different uh, forms and styles of manual therapy um, so that students have information um, that they can then carry forth into critical thinking. Um, all of those features together, we're, we're really trying to solidify information for students so that they not only pass their test, but they take it forward into their practice. And I also noticed that the textbook's organization is, is very unique. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah, I, I'd like to tackle that one. You know, that the, the organization really uh, is pretty key. We start each system with basic structures, functions, key terminology, pronunciations of those systems before we dive into the details of how that system actually works. Um, that helps focus the students on some key information before they get overwhelmed with some of the details. We've also organized and laid out the systems in a manner uh, so that we can lay foundational knowledge of, let's say, the muscular system and the nervous system uh, before we ask students to start thinking about the more complex interactions between those systems, like the neuromuscular reflexes and proprioceptive loops, uh, all of the integrated and complex processes 
uh, that they're going to want to start tying together. We try and organize it so that they're getting the basic information first and then challenge them to think about that information when they can make um, more, uh, more realistic and useful connections with that information. Wow. And we're excited that this new edition is coming out from Books of Discovery. Yeah. Yes. Right. So tell, tell me more about the second edition. So we've added a couple of key things. Uh, one is that we've written some unit openers to kind of solidify dividing all of the body and all of the information into kind of common themes and how those themes tie together so that people kind of get a big picture idea before they kind of dive into individual chapters. And as they get into chapters, each one is kind of opening with, um, with art and a, a pre-learning story or scenario that helps kind of remind students of things that they do every day that this is about the body. The body isn't something that's foreign. We all live in it and we should really kind of get connected to it. And the stories kind of do that, get you connected to that, but also ask some open-ended questions about what are some of the things that we're curious about as we move forward. That's to help students feel a little bit more grounded, number one, in what they already know, and also kind of invested, like what do I wanna know? Why would I wanna know this information? Um, Attached is also kind of uh, an online bibliography. Within chapters, we have end notes that have resources, but we also opted for an online bibliography so that people that are trying to dig into the deeper research and find uh, frontline research have a way to do that. And because it's online, we're gonna be able to update it continually, which is really nice. Because one of the things we found between obviously first and second edition is a period of time where things changed. Um, so that it just the AMP changed. And so we needed to change the information. So it's nice to have an online bibliography so people can do that. And an updated edition that's written with the current research in mind and clinical applications. Right. So how does the review guide complement the a and textbook? Well, we're, uh, we're really proud of the review guide because we're, we're clear that um, when students can actively engage in the information uh, by working with puzzles or building a model of a specific structure uh, or uh, draw their own pictures or their own graphs or uh, diagrams and when they can create their own story about how the system works, analogies and, and uh, mnemonics of what they're doing with that. When we engage all those different channels in, in their brain for how they might learn and uh, get involved with this information, it leads to a more lasting understanding of that information. Uh, it, helps them, uh, it helps them solidify again uh, their knowledge so that they move beyond uh, just passing a test. You know, we can quiz right. them forever, you know, uh, and we do include quizzes too. <laughs> we can quiz them forever, but what we, we want them to do is to take the information and, and move it into their practice. Right, there's sort of a element of lifelong learning there. Yeah, I mean, I think I am really blessed to have a co-author that is quite the uh, learning specialist and 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 uh, really good at helping uh, engage students in different ways for learning. That's great. I think one of those things too, um, Drew, is that uh, students tend to engage with information from a place that they're comfortable. We're so focused on gathering facts and gathering information that we want it to be easy. We want it accessible. And that's important. If I like things in a visual way, or if I like things kind of energized with a game, I, I learn and invest and it's easier for me that way. But the research actually shows that if you're going to hang on to it and it's going to make an impact, you need to work with it in ways that you're not as comfortable with. So the learning guide kind of gives those options to students. If they're really looking for, how do I get this because I'm struggling with this, they can use a tool like a crossword puzzle or a coloring exercise or a fill in the blank that makes sense to them and organizes stuff in the way that it works for them. Or if what they're really trying to do is drive some depth or gain some perspective and breadth on a topic, they can use an exercise that challenges them to write a poem or write a story 
or uh, play with the flashcards that they made that they've been studying in line, play a concentration game with them or something like that. So we hope it kind of creates some choices for people uh, that makes it more accessible, but also challenges them in ways that they may not have thought of. Right. Wow. What a terrific combination. <laughs> wow. This is, this is all very exciting. Wow. Yeah. Thanks. Um, it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, well, Pat and Lisa, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for, for sharing you, what's, what's new in the second edition of Applied Anatomy and Physiology for Manual Therapists. Let me just throw in here that instructors, if you'd like a free review copy of this second edition, you can email us at info at booksadiscovery.com or you can call us at 800-775-9227. Thanks so much.